Hi everyone! Today I'm going to share with you one trick I'm always using when I'm editing portraits. This trick helped me a lot to achieve the results I was looking for and I hope it will be a good help for you too. I'm going to show you some of the steps I'm doing while editing an image from setting up a shoot to delivering the finished product. If you go to the official website of the Samyang AF 35mm f1.4 Mark II, then you can see the images I shot and today I'm going to give you some of the behind the screen secrets. I've made these photographs of Rien in my home where space is quite limited but that's where the 35mm focal lens shines and the Samyang AF 35mm f1.4 Mark II performed really well. If you want to see a review of this lens, just click on the link right here on the top right corner. For this shoot, I used two lights. My main light was behind a large softbox and a smaller one above and behind my model. And I also used a reflector. As you can see, it's a very simple setup, nothing complicated. As my goal was to create painterly images, I set the main light to be 45 degrees on the right of my model and 45 degrees above. This type of lighting is called Rembrandt lighting after the famous Dutch painter and it is very popular in photography as it creates a nice play of shadows on your subject's face. So after I took the photographs, I first do the retouching and color grading of my images as usual like extending the background and adding texture to it, removing unwanted blemishes on my subject's face. Then. I set the colors I am aiming for. On this one, I'm going for an analogous setup where I use colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. As you can see, the result is already quite good but there is one more step to make it perfect. I merge all the layers into a new layer to have a snapshot of this version for later use. Let's just name it um, Color Snapshot. When we talk about colors, there are three things that you have to consider the hue, saturation, and luminance. When I choose the colors I'm using, that's when I set the hues and how intense I want them is where I set the saturation. So it is very important to see the colors and see them as they are. So here, a color corrected monitor is quite essential. If you look at Rembrandt's paintings, he used just a limited amount of hues and usually not too saturated colors. What makes his paintings really good is the play with the tones. When I look at his paintings, there is one thing that amazes me is that they look really good in black and white as well. The lights and shadows are in such great harmony and to me, this creates the magic in his paintings. That's why once I finish with the colors on my images, once I'm really happy with how the hues and saturation are in place, I do this next step which first might make no sense. I remove all the colors to have a grayscale image. This might sound crazy to you that after I spent a lot of time perfecting the colors, I got rid of them. But the reason why I am doing this is because now I want to focus on the third part of the colors, the last letter of HSL, luminance. The reason why I remove the colors is because Different colors have different perceived luminance. Have a look at this color wheel where all the colors have the same saturation and luminance. Only the hues changing and for reference, I use a 50% gray background. You can already see that different colors look like they have different brightness, but as I said, they're all at the same 50% luminance. If I remove the colors using the saturation slider, then you can see as the saturation slider also takes the relative luminance in account, hence the yellows creating a brighter gray and the blues creating a darker gray, while the red creates the 50% gray. But if I use the black and white filter instead where I set the luminance value to each color separately to 50%, then I receive a nice 50% gray from all the colors. You can use this to your advantage as you can set a different luminance to different colors. So instead of the perceived luminance, you can control the tonality of your image. For example, if you want darker blues or brighter skin tones, then just set a lower or higher value for the color which you want to change. As this time I want to go with the perceived tonality, I will use the saturation slider to get rid of the colors by lowering it to zero instead 
of the black and white filter. Once I have a grayscale image, I just try to create a good black and white image using either the levels or curves, but you can use any of the tools you want, even plugins. If you want more control in the conversion, then use the black and white filter and use the different color sliders to get the effects you want. As you can see now, I have a good looking black and white image, so it's time to bring back the colors. I can do this two ways. One is simply putting back some saturation by raising the saturation slider, or I use the snapshot layer I created earlier with colors, and now I move it on the top of all layers and set its layer blending mode to color. I prefer the later one because then my levels will not affect the color tones, just the luminance. As you can see the difference on my model slips. As you can see this way, I get the result that more closely resembles the Baroque style Rembrandt used with strong tones, more play with the lights and darks. Let me know in the comments which version you prefer. Personally, I like both, but they represent two different moods, don't you think? I hope this little tutorial was helpful and you've learned something new today. And as always, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!